Hi, today we are looking at section 7.6, which deals with a vertex form of a quadratic function. Now, our vertex form makes things a bit easier for us to graph because just looking at our equation, we know where our vertex is. So if a quadratic equation is in its vertex form, we can tell the location of vertex by looking at our equation. The vertex form of a quadratic is y equals a times x minus h squared plus k, where h comma k is the location of our vertex. For graphing a quadratic in vertex form, we'll create a table of values with h and k in the middle, and then we'll do a couple x values far less than h and a couple far higher than h. So for example, graph y equals x minus three squared minus four. Now, one key thing when looking at this equation is it takes the form of minus h. So because it's minus h, that technically means this h value is positive three. And then this one doesn't change because it's plus k. So our h value always changes sign from what's in here. So we know our vertex is at three, negative four. So we'll do a couple x values that are less than that and a couple that are larger than that. So we have our equation y is equal to 2 times x minus 3 squared minus 4. So we have 2 times 1 minus 3 squared minus 4. So we need to make sure we follow bed mass. So we'll do what's in our brackets first, then our exponent, then multiply, then subtract. So 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 minus 4 is 4. Next, we have 2 times 2 minus 3 squared minus 4. So 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. Times 2 is 2. Minus 4 is negative 2. Next, we have 2 times 4 minus 3 squared minus 4. So we've got 4 minus 3 is 1. 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2, minus 4 gives us negative 2. Next, we have 5, so we've got 2 times 5 minus 3 squared minus 4. So 5 minus 3 is 2, 2 squared is 4, times 2 is 8, minus 4 is 4. So plotting this at 1, we are at 4. 2, we are at negative 2. we we are at negative four four we're at negative two five we are at four so you can see our table of values is a lot more precise and quicker done if we have it in vertex form now we can also work the opposite way so if we have our graph we can come up with an equation in vertex form so to do so what we want to do is find our vertex h comma k and substitute it into our equation for h and our k. We can then choose any other point along our line, as long as it's in our vertex, substitute in for x and y to solve for our a value. So we'll do a couple examples of this. So first example, we want to determine the equation of this. So we've got our h is three, our k is negative one. So we've got y is equal to a times x minus h squared plus k. So substituting in our h and k, that gives us y equals ax minus 3 squared minus 1. And then we can choose any other point. So we already have some x-intercepts to mark, so I might use one of them. So if I use 2 comma 0, that's 0 for y. And then my x would be 2. So a times 2 minus 3 squared minus 1. So move for 1 to the other side. So I've got 1 is equal to essentially 2 minus 3 is 1. 1 squared is 1 times a. So our a value is 1. So if our a value is 1, we can just drop it out of this equation. So our equation is equal to y is equal to x minus 3 squared minus 1. Here's another one. So this is our h, this is our k. We've got y is equal to a 
x minus h squared plus k. So we've got y is equal to a times x minus three squared plus eight. Now we can choose any other point. So let's say this one here. So that's five comma zero. So that's zero is equal to a times five minus three squared plus eight. I'd move eight to the other side by subtracting it. Now five minus three is two, two squared is four. So that gives us four a. Divide both sides by four. And we get negative two as our a value. We'll write that into this equation. So we've got y is equal to negative 2 times x minus 3 squared plus 8. Now with vertex form, it's also nice because from looking at our equation, we can determine how many zeros it will have before graphing it. So it will have two zeros if our a value is greater than zero and our k is less than zero because essentially in that case, if our a value is greater than zero, that means it opens up. If our k value is less than zero, that means our vertex is below the x-axis. So if our vertex is here and it opens up, we're going to have two x-intercepts. Alternatively, if a is less than zero, so in other words, negative, and k is greater than zero, so positive, we will also have two zeros because if k is positive, we're gonna have our vertex above the axis. If a is negative, we're opening up downwards, so we're gonna have two intercepts. Now we're gonna have one zero if k is equal to zero. Now, for this, it doesn't matter if a is positive or negative, because if k equals zero, what that means is our vertex is right on the axis, so it's going to have exactly one answer. So it could open up like this and have our vertex on the axis, or it could open down. So it doesn't matter what our a value is, it's as long as k is zero. Now, we're going to have no zeros if a and k are both positive because what that's going to do is if they're both positive, our vertex is above the axis and it opens up, so it's not going to cross our axis at all. Alternatively, if they are both negative, we're going to have the same type of situation except for our vertex is below our axis. And then because it opens downwards, it's also not going to cross. 